refreshing. Yeah, I need more refreshing than we're freezing our tracks. The trick to not being cold is thinking warm. Think Caribbean, blue skies, warm water, running on the beach barefoot. Is it working? Well, I think so. The sand is so hot I can't feel my toes. <laughs> Grandma, it's this way. It is? Yep, for another two blocks. You sure? Yeah, remember we don't turn right how that comes a mango tree. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I must have your Uncle Joe's sense of direction. There must be one more block. You think? Or two. I get the feeling we're on the wrong island. How lost are we? We're lost. I don't know where we are. I'm so sorry, Grandma. I shouldn't listen to you. It's okay, darling. We'll get back on track. Excuse me. Could you tell us the way to the Beaumont City trailer park? No. Thank you. Come on, what are we gonna do? Well, let's just hang together, honey. We can't be too far off course. Hey, watch where you're going, baby. Get out of here. Dinah, are you all right? My name is Russell Green. Maybe you passed me and my family out on the highway. Maybe you were driving some fancy sports car or an old beat-up four-door. Or maybe you've had some hard times like us and you're out on the road with your house hitched up behind you and America the beautiful up ahead. But whoever you are, you be sure to give us a wave next time you drive by because we're your neighbors and we're all on the road together. Under newspapers in this cold. You can't imagine all those homeless people out there. In every city, Addie. Well, we certainly made a fortunate turn. That little lamb would never have made it to Summers. Yeah, well, same goes for us, Grandma. We would never have made it back home if we hadn't found Allison. How old are you, Allison? Eighteen. Mm. How old? Fifteen. Fourteen, maybe? Is she gonna sleep with us tonight? She can have my bed. I can sleep on the floor. No, I don't want to be in any trouble. I'll just go to the shelter. No, no, you just sit down and finish your soup. There's no rush. Uh, but tell me, um, if there's a shelter for you now, why were you sleeping on the street? Do you run away? You don't have to worry. We won't hurt you. But you're going to call the police, aren't you? The police? They wouldn't do that. Would you, Uncle Russell? You have parents that are worried about you? No. The truth. I have a mother. She drinks more than she should. She hits, she screams, she's no fun to be around. But in a couple days she'll be okay, and then I'll go home. Please don't call the police. No. Do you just get a good night's sleep? We'll settle all this in the morning. <sighs> Drunk mother. I don't buy it. The way she looks, she's been on her own for a while now. She needs help? Yeah, I know. More help than we can give. My kid brother's out there somewhere, too. I know. 
And you'd be cold and hungry. And in need of a hot bowl of soup. Well, if he is in need, I hope he finds someone to help. Joe's too proud, he'd never ask. And we better pray that whoever offers help doesn't take no for an answer. Someone like you. Sleepyhead. Mm -hmm. Why is everybody? Well, your dad went to get a newspaper, and Hattie took Dinah to the rec center, and Nathaniel is Take me to your leader. being captured by aliens. <laughs> Where's Allison? Morning. Wow. You look. Really, I... Thanks. I think. I need you to get some things from the store. List, uh, uh... You want to come? Actually, I'd like Allison to stay here with me. Take Nathaniel. You all get along so well. We have our moments. So how long are you staying in town? A few days, then we're heading up to the northwest. That's where I'm from, Seattle. You'll love it up there. It's really pretty. Oh. Well, we're looking forward to going. Has this happened before, being out on your own? Mm-hmm. A few times. There are places you can go to get help, places that will protect you until your mom stops drinking. So this is why you wanted me to hang? So you could be my fortune teller? Yes. And I see in your future, you making up the bed. Linda, she's from the uh, Beaumont Children's Services Agency. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Where's the girl? She's inside. Oh, darn, that's my office again. Can I use your phone? Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have a phone. It's all right, I got a portable in the car. Just. It's gone. Oh, wait, wait a minute. This is not my beeper. Oh, darn. I must have picked up the wrong one when I left the office. Oh, well. Something wrong. Hey, what's Allison doing over there? Allison! Well, where are you going? The store. Yeah, her mom needs some butter. Butter? We're drowning in butter. Got a couple of these. Guess she's making something special. I'll go with you. No. I mean. Going to the store's a real bore. Nobody likes it. I do. 
Come on, she doesn't want you tagging along. She doesn't? You don't? I won't be long. Allison! Did you see a guy who looks like me, only bigger, walk around the streets trying to keep himself warm? I didn't get close enough to the weirdos to see their faces. That weirdo I'm talking about is my dad. His name is Joe. Sorry, I didn't mean anything. It, it doesn't matter. Uncle Russell says keep on looking because we might find them. I can't give up. See ya. My Uncle Joe's a war vet. Uh, he's had problems ever since he's been back. We've been trying to find him, but he sure misses him a lot. I bet he does. It's hard being away from someone you love. Tell Nathaniel I'll keep an eye out for him, okay? You can tell him yourself when you get back from the store. Yeah, sure. Later. See ya. She must have been hiding your purse under her jacket. Why'd you have to bring that lady here? That would probably scare her. Because we're not staying here forever. And we wanted to help get a roof over Allison's head before we leave. I bet she did think that lady was a policewoman. I should never have brought her here in the first place. Yes, you should have, Hattie. I would have done the same thing if I had found her. I'm going to help Uncle Russell look for her. Yeah, not a bad idea. missing nothing wallet cash credit card it's all there well then why did you take it in the first place and why'd you run off i panicked i saw the woman from children's services i didn't want to be sent back i just wanted to get you some help you don't understand i can't be sent back there's something i have to do what find my brother. He lives in a foster home here in Beaumont. Well, at least I thought he did. He's gone. His whole foster family moved. Is that why you've been living out on the streets? Man, he didn't leave a forward address. Well, that was the strange part. Why I had to come and find him. After my parents died, Tommy and I were separated. We both lived in a bunch of different foster homes. But we always wrote to each other until a couple of months ago when he stopped writing. In his last letter, he sounded so depressed. Then my letters just got returned. This is me and Tommy. And this is Tommy, the last year we saw each other. I was seven, and he was ten. I was going to take your money. I'm not proud to say it. So I could go find him. Why'd you bring it back? Because of what Nathaniel and Josh told me. About you guys looking for his father. I didn't want to hurt anybody who was doing that, too. Well, what about the rest of your story? How much of it was a story? My foster mother never hit me. And she's not a drunk either. But she doesn't care about me. It's like a factory over there. A kid factory. They do it for the money. The more the merrier. Look. I'm really sorry about everything. And thanks for what you've done. But I gotta go. Where? To find Tommy. Why don't you let us help you? 
Even after what I did? We're searchers. Searchers gotta stick together. On one condition. That after we find him, you go back to your foster parents. All right? Allison's life is so sad. I'm never gonna complain about mine again. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm serious, Josh. She was sleeping on the freezing cold cement with all those creeps and criminals. She could have died. It's a good thing you found her. There's a lot of others that probably won't make it through the night. Guess we really are lucky. Definitely. Thank right, Josh. We've uh, got a bit of a situation here, Miss Pacton. It's about that girl, Runaway. Hmm. Oh, right, right, right. Have you found her? She's fine. What about your purse? It's fine, too. She returned everything. Guilty conscience. Good for her. You're not smiling. She doesn't want to go back to her foster parents, at least not right away. She has to. That's the law. Well, it might be the law, but in this case, it didn't watch right. Something tells me I'm going to need to sit down for this one. She has a brother. They were placed in separate foster homes years ago. And somehow they have found themselves a half a state apart. Now his foster family moved recently and she doesn't have his new address. She's desperate to find him. And you want to help her? Yeah. Let me get this straight. You're willing to take her in, feed her three square meals a day, give her a warm, safe place to sleep, and you don't expect any compensation in return? Oh, we get more compensation than you can imagine. I love people who have room in their hearts to help kids in trouble. But you're breaking the law. And it's my job to take that child from you and place her in a licensed foster home. Ma'am? I'm going to have to file a report anyway. I'm just going to give myself a little reminder for now. I am so far behind in my paperwork. It's ridiculous. How far? Oh, one week, two weeks. You tell me. Now, what's the name of that foster family? Barbara Manning. That'd be weird. I haven't gone two days in a row my whole life without seeing my sister. As much as I've wanted to sometimes. I remember the last day so clearly. It was a couple of years after my parents died. They kept me and Tommy together for a while. But he always got in trouble. And then one day, they told us that we were both going to new families. Different families. So we ran away together to our spot, which is down by the tracks. So our father worked on the railroads. And we liked to go hang out there and watch them go by, wonder which one was his. Wonder about the people we saw in the windows, what their lives were like. Were they rich or famous? <laughs> Tommy made the best stories. We wanted to hop a train that day, the two of us. But they caught us before we had the chance. I haven't seen him since. I'm sorry. What's the first thing you're going to do when you see him again? I'm going to give him a really big hug and kiss and tell him how much I love him. Then I'm going to make him take me to the Beaumont overpass. It's in town somewhere. My dad's train used to pass by there. Tommy loves to stand there and watch it go by. And remember. Sounds nice.
What you guys doing? Talking. Where are you going? Right here. I went on a train once. Yeah? With my dad. Except we had to sneak off. Some spies were chasing us. Spies? Why were spies chasing after you? My dad's in the CIA. <laughs> the CIA. Except we kind of lost our ticket. So the porter was chasing after us, too. <laughs> Tell me more about you and your dad's adventures. Once we had to go into a sewer. Sewer? Yep. Did it sink? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you warm enough out here? Hey, what happened to your new friend? She's with Nathaniel. He won't let her out of his seat. Well, sounds like somebody's got his first crush. They about crushed any chance I had with her. Hey, I think I have something for you. It's an address of his last family. Oh, it's in here somewhere. All right. Ah. Uh, this is a bill from Virgil's dry cleaning. Oh, <laughs> it's on the back. Oh, here's some advice. I would go over there and introduce myself before I take Allison over there. She'll be home at 6 o'clock. You check the situation out first. We will. And thank you for everything, Linda. Oh, just let me know how it goes. Uh, don't you need this? After what he did to my blouse? No. This is it. Yes. Good evening. Are you Barbara Manning? I am. Well, we certainly are glad to find you. My name's Russell Green. This is my son, Josh. We're looking for any foster children. I don't have foster children. I don't do that sort of thing anymore. Maybe you could tell us where he is, Tommy Rhodes? I'm sorry. I can't help you. We have his sister with us. Allison. Yes, ma'am. He told me a lot about her. Well, he loved her a great deal. Well, she's looking for Tommy, and any information you could give us, we sure would appreciate it. Tommy's dead. It was an accident last fall. Uh, it was an awful accident. I'm sorry. You tell her that I said I'm very sorry. Mrs. Manning. No, please go away. I can't help you. I'm really sorry. There's something the matter, isn't there? She told you something. Yes, she did. Well, tell me. Let's take a walk. Tommy's gone. He ran away. How's that? No, that's okay. As soon as he settles somewhere, he'll try to find me. I bet he went to California. He hates the cold.
I'm sorry. Tommy's dead. I'm sorry. That's, that's impossible. That's not true. That's a lie. You guys are just saying this to get rid of me. We know how bad this must be. <laughs> no, you don't. He's all I have. Take it back. Please, take it back. Tommy, this can't happen. I need you. Tommy, please. Oh, my God. How did it happen? I'm not sure, honey. Some kind of accident. I have to know. We'll help you find out. We will stay with you as long as you need us. <laughs> They're gone. Grandma took Dinah to the market. Uncle Russell and Aunt Claire had to do something important. So did Josh. He went to go get us hot chocolate. Josh. I'm sorry about your brother. Where's Josh? The rec center. You can't go out like that. Josh, thank heavens. Come on, let's go. What are you talking about? Put the hot chocolate down. Come on, we gotta go. Where? Mrs. Manning. We gotta go see Mrs. Manning. We, we saw her yesterday. You did. I didn't. What if she's lying? What if Tommy's still alive? Allison, he's not. He still has to know how he died. Well, that's what my parents are trying to find out. Come on, why don't we just go wait in the train? Go. Oh. I mean, Josh, please. I mean, she knew him. She talked to him. I have to go meet Mrs. Nay. Can't you see that? How does the state just walk away from a kid in need? <laughs> the state doesn't walk, Mr. Green. Most of the time, it just stumbles or falls flat on its face. Budget cuts, red tape, 112 kids to every social worker. Take your pick. Well, I hope you don't mind if I save my sympathy for Allison instead of some government agency. Oh, don't get me wrong, Mr. Green. I'm not defending the system. I'm just telling you the way it is. The state didn't drop kick Tommy. He applied for his emancipation, and he won it. Won what? A chance to live out on the streets? That was his way out. Look at his record. First family had him for less than a year. Three months with the second family. His third foster fam... Third foster family didn't even have him for 72 hours, and all the reports are the same. A troubled kid who, for whatever reasons, dished it out to everybody. Except with Mrs. Manning. He got it together. At least for a while, he had a job at a department store. And it all blew up. Drugs, alcohol, and low self-esteem make for a terrible potion. All right, look, we can't do anything about what happened to Tommy. Right now, I'm more concerned with how Allison's going to take the news. 
Losing your only kin to an accident, that's bad enough. But suicide, that just knocks the wind out of me saying it out loud. You're Allison. I have to talk to you. I need to know about Tommy. Thanks. Tommy, all grown up. You know, you really remind me of him. I hoped we'd meet someday. Though, I feel like I already know you, because Tommy spoke of you so often. What did he say? He said you were the better angel of his soul. That's from Dickens, you know. Tommy read anything he could get his hands on. He loves stories, reading them, telling them. He used to make up stories for me. How long did he live with you? Not long, less than a year. You still have his pictures up. He was special to me. He was a very special boy. Allison, in the photographs, Tommy looks happy. But he wasn't. Why? What happened? He had a hole inside of him that he tried to fill with drugs. But they couldn't fill it. Nothing could. But how did he get that way? What happened to him? He was like that when he came here. <laughs> Nothing I did seemed to change it. I reached out to him. I really did. But... He just kept sinking deeper and deeper until he... Until what? Tell me. You owe me. I'm his sister. I have to know the truth. Tell me how my brother died. He jumped off the Beaumont overpass. He was hit by a train. letter for you. I'm sorry, I know I should have gotten it to you sooner, but I, uh, I wanted it to be in person. I just didn't have the strength. Tommy killed himself. Allison, I hope you should go. He left me. I'm doing. She didn't mean that. She didn't have to. It's a question I've asked a thousand times. Go be with her. Thanks. Allison! Nathaniel! What are you doing? Hey! Stop!
Allison's gone. What do you mean she's gone? She just took off. No, wait. Listen, it, it was my fault. I wanted her to know the truth about Tommy. Oh, boy, that's what I was afraid of. No, I know. I should have known she wasn't ready to hear it. How'd she find you? I took her over. You? And Nathaniel. She really wanted to go. I just Nathaniel? Thought... Where's Nathaniel? He's with Allison. She got in the pickup and he just jumped me back. A stranger's truck? Hitchhiking? Oh, Which my... direction did they go? East. I think I know where they are. Get in the truck. Almost 50 kids in and out of my life over the past 20 years, but Tommy was special. You know, he was one of a kind. Oh, he'd be laughing one minute and shaking his fist at the moon the next. <laughs> Sounds like my Joe. I used to call him the North Wind, because I, I never knew what to expect next. We were through a lot together. I wish I'd done more. Or at least know where I went wrong. Went wrong? They don't make medals big enough for what you've done for children. They gave me more. Well, if you liked being a foster mom so much, then why did you stop? I don't know. I guess I just got too tired to handle the pain. But now you're all alone. Yeah, I am, Dinah. Can't argue that. She was real cool one second, and I never figured she'd freak like that. She's in mourning, only she doesn't know it. Her behavior's bound to be unpredictable. You don't think she'd try to? I hope not. But I know she's got to feel some kind of responsibility for Tommy. She didn't have anything to do with what he did. She's angry, Josh. She's feeling abandoned, all alone. she got the short end of a stick. You can't blame her for being mad at the world. There they are. All right, let's don't overwhelm her, Al. Go up there alone. Allison? It's scary up here. Nathaniel, go away. Please, go away. He dropped your letter. I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. Nothing matters. It's from Tommy. Don't you want to see what it says? I'm going to open it. Allison? Don't come any closer. No, no, no. I won't. I won't. I know how sad you're feeling about Tommy. But this is not the answer. Come with us. Back home. Let's talk. There's nothing to talk about. He killed himself. How could you leave me here alone? You broke your promise. Nathaniel. 
Dear Alley Cat. Is that you, Alley Cat? That's what he called me. By the time you get this letter, you'll know what's happened. I'm sorry, Alley Cat. I tried finding a place for myself in this world. I just couldn't. Sometimes I feel like I'm being swallowed alive by this horrible darkness. I don't see the point anymore. Whatever wrong turn I took, stay as far away from it as you can. I know you will. You were always a strong one. Be strong for both of us. I'd give anything to see you one last time. So go to the Beaumont Overpass and blow me a kiss. Love you forever. Tomcat. I know the darkness he's talking about. I know it too. He's right. He'll swallow you whole if you let him. Already had. No, not if you come back with me. Allison, it's right for you to feel sad. And it's right for you to miss your brother. You feel bad about what he did. Honey, following him over the edge now, it's not going to heal anything. It's not what Tommy wanted from you. It's not what you want. Just take my hand. Come on. Take my hand. Now. I'm going to miss you. Well, we can write. I need a new pen, pal. Uh, you got one. Or six. You, I'm gonna miss the most. Sorry we're late. Uh huh. I love Tommy. And it seems a shame that the two people who loved him the most don't get to remember him together. You want me to live with you? Only if you want to. I love it. Mr. Green, here's my card. You stay in touch, okay? Louis Lobster House. Oh, that's my boyfriend. I should have taken you there. Great seafood. Why, right, she's lousy seafood. Thanks again. All right, everybody, let's go. We're out of here. I don't know what 
have to say. Uh, you don't have to say anything. You just take care of yourself. Thanks, you guys. For everything. You're very welcome.